I, I know that you are actually um, from Egypt and you know that Egypt is one of the oldest civilization humankind. Right, there is Greece, there is Egypt, there is... <laughs> I don't know, I know, but there are five like the, the civilizations, right, which are the foundations of the world uh, civilization. And Egypt is one of them. And I remember when I was in Sec 1, Sec Secondary 1, 13 years old, I studied my history in Chinese because I came from a Chinese school. And they always talk about IT. IT means legit. And of course, we learn about the pyramid and all this. So, you chose to come to Malaysia. Um, was it a difficult decision? And I understand that you're the first person from your family to actually break through to this, I would call it like a groundbreaking, a trailblazer kind of thing, right? So, do you, am I right to say that? Actually, I faced some challenges when I decided to go to Malaysia. I mean, like, even my family was like against me somehow because it's like, you know, no one, no one did that before. Uh, but basically, I chose Malaysia. Mm, it's so popular and economically, it's not that expensive for me. For as someone who's like first person to to go out to go out from my family. So yeah, that's that was why my decision why I chose Malaysia. Was it difficult when you landed there when you didn't have any support? You didn't have like cousins? Well, I faced some difficulties at first because I, I couldn't even speak English at, at that time. Okay. <laughs> I just I just learned English there, so yeah at first I faced some difficulties but yeah, I went through that. What were your in your memory, what were the first three most um uh, uh, challenges that you find that it has an impression or impact in your life? Maybe the culture of the country is totally different, but because the country system is like, I can't say that there is a system somehow more than my country. So. Tell about the culture part. Oh. Don't give the country an excuse. Just say that <laughs> the culture was a clash. So what okay. was that? Yeah. Okay, the... The people there are not like easy going to talk with them in in Malaysia since I'm foreigner so they don't like to talk to me at first so I, I really need time to like you know to how let them get feel? used to, to how me. did you feel the first phase of your life when you felt lonely when you felt unsupported you felt that okay did I make the right decision well there's nothing to regret about because I already made the decision and it's already passed nothing gonna change so, How did you feel at that time? Were you strong or did you like crumple? I felt sad somehow but I said like there's no stop, we have to continue. We have to continue. And if we if we stop it, we are just destroying ourselves and we're destroying our hope. So yeah. That's I, I keep fighting, I keep like trying to learn their language, at least to understand them. But yeah, at least like now currently I can understand somehow. So yeah, I'm easy going now. I have some friends, Malaysian friends. <laughs> I have Malaysian friends. Wow. So that yeah, that was breaking in through into the country. Yeah. It's a real big challenge. Yeah, and also because that like, you did have family opposition, and you wanted to make sure that this was a good decision for you. So you had some kind of good records to show your family, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. What about Elvin? Elvin. This is your first time in Singapore that you're working and you're studying here? Yeah. Yeah. Was it difficult for you also? Uh, it felt really early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us about it? Yes. Somehow I just like to get up from Malaysia to start a real life and yeah. get away from my family. Yeah. <laughs> but what, well, while you're here in Singapore, well, did you have any time in your life that you felt that, hey, um, it is me versus the world? Um, mentality and um, it is me like trying to take on all these challenges what was there such a such a moment no because for me I'm just enjoying my life I don't take any challenges <laughs> just face it through because it's your life you have to face it mm -hmm. if you don't face it it's like why do you just stay back at your home don't get up from mm -hmm. your home mm -hmm. yeah so you guys are like taking things in your stride wow it's better to do it when you're young, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, 
in terms of like culture sh- culture shock, mm. like Malaysia versus Egypt, mm. and you know Egypt is such a country that's entrenched in cultural practices, religious, um, conservative mm. philosophy. Mm-hmm. So when you go to Malaysia, which is a, like a more moderate country, and Singapore is even a more liberal country, mm. is there any takeaway? Is there any takeaway? Is there something to learn from, or is there something that you felt it was negative? What do you, what, what what did you learn from both? What how did you see both? Actually, for me, both are good. Tell me. Why? Because okay, um, for the for this thing in Malaysia and Singapore, I like like uh, I like that. Everyone is like in his own business. No one bothers the other person. That's very serious. I really like it. And everyone, especially here in this country in Singapore, everyone respects the others. Whatever you are, whatever you, your religion is, where wherever you are from. So that's a really positive point, and I think this is the point which made which made Singapore developed country. The prime minister will love you. <laughs> Who is this guy from YouTube? Come to my prime minister's office. <laughs> so yeah, I, I like that. Any country which is based on respect, definitely mm. it will be a developed country. But you know, I I have a feeling that uh, even even though Egypt is in Africa, right? Mm. A lot of people would think that it's part of the Middle East mm. because it's just like a tip part of Africa. Yeah, and uh, it is such a culture that is like in Indonesia, even though it's like a country that is very entrenched is that their own uh, religion, but yet it's so diverse because it has its own distinct culture in every part of Indonesia. Mm. Um, is there something that you think by breaking through your own glass ceiling, your own glass walls by coming out of your own country, is there something you think you can bring back? That you can tell them that, hey, you know, this is something that we all should have in our country that probably will add value. Is there something? The patience and respect. Uh, what did you say that people only mind their own business? I'm like so intrigued. What's that? Uh, well, there are some people who are noisy, some, noisy somehow. They, in your country? Yeah, in like my country. For example, country. if you don't mind, if you don't mind. In gen- general, not specific. I mean, okay. Yeah. Uh, for example, when you have a problem in your own house, um, some of the neighbors like they really want to know everything in details. I think. <laughs> <laughs> like speaker, everybody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think this thing is like, I mean, there's no privacy somehow in this point. Right? Right. Yeah, so that's thing I really don't like it. For example, like the house has like something happens, like maybe someone falls sick. Is a good yeah. thing, or is it something like, like a real life? Fought for us something, so I don't know why, why everyone has to know about it. I mean, like, really? why you should include yourself and involve in it? I don't know. Really? Yeah, yeah. So now that you're, at, and also because your education is in AI, and then uh, for um, Elvin, you are in nursing, which is a great job, and both of you are in the social media generation, <laughs> the Facebook generation. Okay. How this does this technology and this window to the rest of the world? That has been unprecedented impacted your lives and your view of the world and then versus how you view your country and your culture i mean there are differences there are clashes mm-hmm. well the social media is like uh, a really open gate for everyone everyone can really take the advantage of the social media so for me actually i i use the social media to to, to make friends Whatever they are, wherever they are from, mm-hmm. I want to understand how they think, how they, how they live. You know, this is a chance for me. Like for example, if I don't, ha- if I'm not like an active person on the social media, I wouldn't travel around. I wouldn't even know about the countries that are surrounded by Malaysia. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's the point. I mean, it's it's good. It's something good that I I, I try to know other people. Is there something you have not answered? Is there something that you can bring back to your country? Well, I will try my best to implement a good system of education. Is there something that 
it's not um, uh, working well in your country, the education? They don't know the value of education. Really? Yeah. I mean, my country was relative what country in terms of education, but nowadays, I don't know what is the reason, seriously, but I mean, I feel like the people, they don't know about anything. Even the minor stuff, they don't know about it. And that's, really? if that, that's a sign of the, like deflection and the knowledge. No one is like, uh, everyone who is like having a knowledge is outside the country. Yeah. And definitely that will lead the country not to be a developed country. I see. Yeah. Now, now that you've touched on a very, very important point, mm -hmm. if you think that your country, the education is not respected, not valued by people, mm -hmm. there will always be a tendency for this country, the generation, that they are going to take on the world who are the millennials of uh, their mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. that they will be feeling they're lagging behind. I mean, in reality, because the rest of the world or some parts of the world are progressing really, really fast. So, um, do you feel that in the foreseeable future, there's going to be like um, a problem for that generation? There will be, for sure. Yeah, like for example. Well, I believe that education makes the person understand the life and appreciate what mm. whatever is surrounded him. So he knows how to think, he knows mm. how to react. Mm. I mean, for Make, example, yeah. here in Singapore, for example, compared between now and 50 years back, there is a huge difference. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that Singapore yeah. spent a lot of money for yeah. education. Yeah. So do we foresee uh, Khalid going back to be the education minister? <laughs> <laughs> no, but why not? Yeah, sure, sure. You know why? Because you have a you have this knowledge in AI. Um, I would encourage you to pursue it. Um, something before yeah. you go back because you only have like two two more months here. Yeah. You know, one month is already gone. Yeah. So you have about two more months yeah. and uh, go to the universities and see. You will be well in demand if you tell them that you want to do some research on AI for um, vehicles or anything. Yeah. For the professors, I'm very sure you can get a research fellowship yeah. uh, here. Um, and for Elvin, what is your... Uh, you told me that you wanted to be a doctor. That means you don't have a heart to like take care of people. Because being in medicine, right, whatever, it, nursing, medical, it is such a huge calling for your life. Yeah, and it's not... It has to be a calling. Um, what kind... How, how did you make such a decision? Where does this calling come from? Because I was having a, an operation when I was eight, and then that was my first nightmare. Like how? Ooh, uh, because, because can you imagine that a little girl just heard that, okay, uh, daughter is going to open a hole at near your ear to just to take out something. Like near to the brain, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it's quite scary for a little girl. And then, but then the daughter was quite nice, and then just because of him. Mm. So both of you have very great calling, right? And I really love and enjoy talking to both of you. Is there any last final words? Because um, I really want to talk to you guys for episode 2 if you ever have a time. But, you know, because I'm taking up a lot of your time, tell me your last final thing that you want to tell the world. Never give up on anything. Just keep going. Keep learning whenever there is a chance because there are some people who cannot learn mm. because of the I mean they don't have the chance they don't have the money they don't have whatever whatever the reason that avoid them so whenever you have the chance for something don't lose it mm. what about Alvin? any final? Mm. anything that you really want to share with the world? Uh, just go for whatever you want don't hesitate uh, even if you fail for so many times, just get up and keep trying. Don't give up. So, you, you want to ask each other any question? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you foresee yourself in 10 years' time? Someone who can make a change. Where? Either on the... At least, at least, among my big circle of friends or 
in a city, a country, whatever I can do, I will do for sure. Yeah, I think that um, you have to define, uh, uh, and because you guys are very well educated, you know, you in your own field, uh, nursing and medical, and you in your own um, field, um, you have to define that very precisely. Even though later you change, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But you define what change, what impact, whom do you want to impact, where do you want to impact, what, what kind of impact, define that. And then you will find yourself working towards that. And my hope for the people of the country uh, in Egypt is that um, uh, I hope that that country can live up to its fullest potential. Just, just like you guys just like me and just like a lot of us, sometimes we don't live up to our fullest potential, right? We don't live up to the fullest expression of who we are. That we can get the kind of respect and the kind of effect, that the kind of result that we think our lives can have. So I hope that um, my final words for you guys is that think about that every day. For a long, long time, for many, many years, I always sit with the question, why am I here? What do I want to do? Where do I want to go? Okay. You must always do that because that's the, that's the starting point of your life, of your real journey. Otherwise, you are just plodding around. But you know, you guys, I'm very sure you have done it. That's why you are in Singapore. And that's why you are in Singapore. And you will be going back to complete your studies. Um, and I wish you guys well. Um, all the best. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>